Tired of not being tired enough at the end of a race? Sick of having too much leftover energy? Faster MC, Amaranth AMA bring you the Cancer Crusher two-day enduro. enduro. Not like those wimpy 30-mile, one-and-a-half-hour races you used to get. This race is supersized. With the Cancer Crusher Enduro, you get 50% more miles, 50% more sweat, 50% more dirt boogers, and twice the snot rockets. But wait, there's more. Register for this race and you get a second day of 46 miles absolutely free. That's right, almost 100 miles of racing over two days for the low, low entry fee of $95. Register early and you even get $10 off. That's double the fun for a steal. Register now. Operators are standing by. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Joe Rockstar channel. If this is your first Joe Rockstar video, thanks for checking it out. This video is season two, part five of a series of videos meant to show the struggles that I've had learning to ride and become a racer in the local racing circuit here in Arizona. I started this adventure shortly after bouncing back from cancer just about three years ago. If you're thinking about taking up the sport or you just watch for the entertainment value of watching me crash, a lot, well then stick around for the whole video because you might just see a little Easter egg that I'm known to sneak into my videos here and there. Now for those of you who are interested in taking up the sport, I've put some links in the description below that can help you get started. One of the most important things you can do right off the bat is join a club. In addition, these videos do point out some of the common struggles that all beginning riders go through. So it would be a good idea to go back and watch some of those videos and you can learn from my mistakes. It could help you become a better writer someday. Now, as usual, these videos are only possible thanks to the support of the viewers. So if you like what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, and share these videos. And if you'd like to really help out, pledge your support on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Joe Rockstar. A dollar a month may not seem like much to you, but with enough supporters, we can do some amazing things. And last but not least, one of the greatest things about YouTube is it's interactive. You can engage with me. So please, if you like what I'm doing or if you hate what I'm doing, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what I'm doing right or what I'm doing wrong or what you'd like to see more of. Round five brings us back to Morristown, Arizona, which is about 50 miles northwest of Phoenix for one of the most challenging races the 500 EXC and I have ever faced. This race wasn't just the race with the longest sounding name, Round five of the 2018 Amra Moda City AMA Arizona Off-Road State Championship Series, the Cancer Crusher, and round one of the AMA ISDE West qualifiers. It was also the longest race at almost 100 miles over the period of two days. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this video may be a little bit longer than usual, but there was a lot of stuff to cover. The race itself, my experience, the controversy with the rules and scoring. So let's get to it. All kidding aside, this was a tough race. And in the grand scheme of things, Faster MC deserves huge props given the challenges of hosting such an ambitious event. Considering that it was not only an AMRA event, which is a challenge in itself to put on, but it was also round one of the 2018 AMA West Region International Six Days Enduro Qualifier Series. For those of you who don't know, the International Six Days Enduro is like the Olympics of off-road motorcycle racing. No big deal, but kind of a big deal. This world championship for national teams is going to take place this year, November 12th through the 17th at Viña del Mar, Chile. The International Six Days Enduros is the world's largest annual off-road motorcycle competition. Since 1913, countries have sent their best off-road racers to exotic locations around the world to be tested on everything from sandy beaches to rocky crevices in deep woods to motocross tracks for the event's top prize, the ISDE World Trophy. I did pretty good preparing for day one, keeping hydrated and stretching before the race started. Don't jump that. <laughs> like I prepped the bike and rode a mileage tracker down so I would always know how much further I had to go during the race. It helps a lot to know how many miles you've gone and how many you have left when you're feeling tired and there's no end in sight. <laughs> For day one, we would start with a short, non-scoring transfer section, which is why no one is blasting off the start line looking for a hole shot. Transfer sections are areas of a race course that are not timed or scored, but they can be challenging, and there are limits to how long you can take to get to certain checkpoints. 
Woo. No. That's a transfer. Were you just racing it? Yeah. <laughs> well, you were killing it, man. You were killing it. No, I mean, the faster you get through it, the longer you can take breaks to other places, you know? And we had an hour and 45 minutes to get through the first two test sections and check in about the 25 mile mark, which is around halfway through the course. The second half, we would be close to the same mileage and time limit, but contained four test sections. At each test section, we would check in and then start, one bike at a time, 15 to 20 seconds apart. 91! Once the test section was over, we check in again and we start the transfer to the next test section. Now I was nervous, but shortly after starting test one, I settled in and started to execute my plan for this race. I wrote this mantra on my handlebars. Focus, breathe, attack. The goal, ride fast enough to set my sights on the rider ahead of me, chase him down and make a pass, then speed up to find another one to pass. This is about chewing through miles as fast as I dared and hunting down other riders. This mindset seemed to work very well, but it took a while before my confidence level was high enough to really let loose. The transfer between test one and two offered some opportunity to test my skills. After getting cattywampus in this short whoop section, and then followed by a low speed get off, I took a small shot to my confidence and was not prepared for what lay ahead in the gravel pit that was test two. Welcome to Arizona's grass track, it says. Looks like that's meant to be funny. Oh, test two, I had some problems, and it was a huge setback. This test section would give me problems both days.
was sticking to my mantra, and even though I made a few good passes in test one and test two, I still wasn't riding to my full potential, which would become very apparent in the second half of this race. Thankfully, the over 20 miles of transfer section in test three would give me some low consequence seat time that I really needed to rebuild my confidence. nine miles to go to the time check and uh, I'm doing okay this is the second transfer section going to test three and I'm not cruising it but I'm definitely not on the throttle either but I do want to get it over with kind of quickly without burning too much energy just so I have time to change the camera battery drink some water um, without being late to my test. This transfer section reminds me a lot of 11 mile back in uh, Marana. I mean like wasting energy in a transfer. Star Cactus, rock on Cactus. Anybody know what time it is? Well, I made it to the halfway point with plenty of time to spare. In fact, I had about 20 minutes to relax, drink some water, eat an energy bar, and get ready to start off again. Now, this wasn't test three. This was only the halfway point. We still had quite a lot of transfer to go before we'd get to test three.
Now, those of you who aren't from Arizona, you see all these fluffy little plants on the side of the road? Well, those are called cholla. And don't you just really want to pet one? Well, if you feel like you must, you better bring some pliers, because I guarantee you, they're not fluffy. getting very cold. My hands are freezing. get the wheel back on the trail. The second half of this transfer was pretty technical, but very easy. Sure, I had some struggles at times, but I overcame them, and for the last four test sections, I was putting in some of the best riding I've ever done. Now there are people in this world who believe that doing good is just good enough. And they're happy with that. Now at this point in test three, I feel like I'm doing good. Just good enough. Thankfully, Colton McLaughlin was there on the 221 Husqvarna to remind me that good enough just ain't good enough.
One of the riders that passed me was a B rider who must have got way behind. You're welcome. But chasing him helped me go a lot faster. I never caught him, but I definitely improved my speed a lot. Thanks, Brandon. enjoying it despite this crappy weather I think the hardest thing in this course so far is to be confident that you've gone the right way like I don't know if I just made the wrong turn or the right turn there's a pink ribbon so I guess I made the right turn It would all come together for test six, where I would go faster and ride more confident than I've ever ridden in a race before.
At the end of day one, not only was I stoked about my overall performance, the biggest victory was the victory over fatigue. I felt pretty good, all things considered. I put in some of my fastest single track miles ever. I rode close to 50 miles over three hours. Hell, I felt so good, I thought I could have done another test or two for sure. It would not be till morning of the next day that I would see the results. 15th overall and third my class. Later that evening, we would find out that this was a scoring error. Even so, I was still top 20 overall at 18th out of 80 C riders and fourth in my class. As cool as this event was, it created a lot of confusion as to how us lowly AMRA riders, not competing for a spot on the US ISDE team, would be handled. Even the race director seemed to be confused. This is really a co-sanctioned event, so if you were going after the qualifier points, no matter what class, LOI on down, you need to finish both days. If you're only interested in AMRA points, then you need to start both days and we'll take your best score. So I just want to make sure that's, that's clear. I was determined to finish both days, so this really wasn't a factor for me, but it seemed important to some people. Now, at the end of this race, a lot of riders were very angry that they were disqualified from receiving points for the race after failing to finish on day two. I'm sure they pointed to the race director's comments. Now, there's no doubt that the wrong information was put out by that race director, and I know a lot of my fellow racers do not want to accept this, but I have to say as a racer, it is our responsibility to read the rules for each event. The supplemental rules for the ISDE qualifiers are on the AMA website for anyone to see. And under race procedure, item seven, it clearly states that besides the riders that are competing to represent the US in the ISDE, quote, all other participants must finish all tests and transfers to be considered a finisher of each day, end quote. Now, yes, the race director misspoke at the rider meeting, but given the scope of this event, and that the American Motorcycle Association was the governing body, it only makes sense that no AMRA officer, club officer, event official, or racer on the site has the authority to just change the rules on the spot. After all, these are the rules for every other participant of an ISDE qualifier in the entire country. And those of us competing in these events need to know the rules and challenge anyone who contradicts the rules. If only someone would have referenced the AMA rules and quoted it to him verbatim, I can't help but think that the race director would have either corrected himself or retracted his statement until he could get clarification. Either way, if you sacked up and finished both days, good for you. For those of you who had mechanical issues and injuries, that sucks, but that's part of racing. Day two was the same course, but this time it was in reverse. Now I was not as prepared as I was the day before. I forgot to stretch before the race. I didn't exactly eat right, and lately I've taken steps to eat better and get in shape for the races. I rode a lot of miles that day, and I downed a lot of donuts, little chocolate donuts. Now I would pay for that later. Fellow C40 rider Clay Cook took good sportsmanship to another level when he heard I didn't have a watch and had trouble keeping track of how much time I had to reach my checks on day one. He rushed to my camp minutes before his start time just to loan me a watch to use for day two. Yes, sir. Damn, is that a brat in my hand? Oh well. You don't get this kind of physique from eating grass, that's for sure. Anyways, I have to say thanks to Clay. I still have your watch, man, and I promise to bring it to the next race. Now, guys like Clay are shining examples of what good sportsmanship is all about. Even Tim McGuire from the C50 class was getting into the spirit. What were you saying? Say what, you can't get one of your supporters to spend $6.99 for a chair for you. Look at that pile of crap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, help Joe out. Buy him a chair. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. So, like I said, I didn't set myself up well for day two. Besides having a terrible night's sleep with temperatures close to freezing, I failed to eat right, hydrate, and stretch before the race. I was feeling off the whole day. I never felt in sync with my bike. When I needed to shift my weight forward, it was too far back, and when I needed to be weighting the right side, I was hanging out on the left. My reaction time was terrible. Nevertheless, my scores on day two do not show much of a drop off from day one. I feel like this can be best explained by sensory adaptation. See. I just got used to going faster on day one, and now I was beginning to get numb to the speeds I was going. My new fast, 
felt like my old slow. And so in my mind, I felt like I was doing worse than what I was actually doing. I mean, I was actually pretty close to the same. In fact, I posted another fourth place finish on day two. But this time, I was exhausted. After almost 100 miles, six hours of riding and three days of camping, I was spent and I was ready to get some rest. Twice now results posted showing me in third place were later changed. In case you missed it, I made a joke about it the last time it happened. Joe Rockstar, it is such an honor for you to represent the city of Sierra Vista by taking third place in round two of the 2018 Arizona Off-Road State Championship. Yay! I know this guy. I think my sponsors. Nice try, Joe Rockstar. Here's your consolation prize. And again, I made light of it at the beginning of this video. However, this is very frustrating. I understand the difficulty in the logistics of running these races for clubs. There's no profit for them, and the whole thing is dependent on volunteers. So maybe AMRA should step up and hire some scoring crews for each event. Now that this series is sanctioned by the AMA, it would seem that it may be worthwhile to ensure that basic things like the rules and the results are accurately represented and relayed to the writers in a timely manner. I don't pretend to know the difficulty of such things, and I still think Faster MC did a great job putting up one hell of an event. Definitely my favorite race yet. Thank you. Well, there's a ton of footage on the cutting room floor, and I could probably talk so much more about this event, but I'm pretty sure that most people haven't even made it this far into the video. So I'm gonna end it right here. Before I go though, I gotta let you guys know, I am beyond excited for the next race. The Kenda SRT West Hair Scramble Rough Rider 100 is another co-sanctioned event between the AMA, AMRA, and the National Hare and Hound Series, which will take place in Prescott, Arizona over the President's Day weekend, February 16th through the 18th. Now this is shaping up to be one of the most anticipated events of the season. Some of the biggest names in off-road racing are going to be there to compete. It's a huge opportunity to meet some of the best in the industry and watch them go head-to-head -head from a great vantage point provided by Little Dealer RV in Prescott. Even better, this is a chance for some of the pros to meet their latest hero, Joe Rockstar. Visit the website for more information. I'm going to place a link down in the description below. I want to thank all my Patreon supporters, my family and friends for all they do to help support the channel and my race addiction. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.